Greetings, this is August 14th, 11 a.m. Probably won't be before noon until you get this. It takes a little while to process the video after it's been created. It goes frame by frame and then it gets uploaded to YouTube. So go to the official sites and the links below to get the most recent information on evacuation alerts and orders and uh, where new fire outbreaks may be occurring. We are looking at an image from Big Bar Cam just a few minutes ago, and it looks like there's a lot of activity going on. Uh, 10 kilometers east of this position is Fire 42324. East of the chasm, east of uh, 70 Mile House, that was now 90% contained as of last night. Very good news. Um, uh, great work by the crews to uh, bring this one down and it makes me personally nervous when fire gets so close to the ecological reserve but fire caused by lightning is a natural occurrence and lightning often foretells rain so the two work together to kind of cleanse patches of the forest throughout the fire season. We're now looking at the Begbie Cam uh, facing northwards towards 100 Mile House. There's a lot of haze, cloud, uh, fog in low-lying areas. And I'm going to post another link below for Dry BC. I'm not sure if this is kind of a back door or the front door or... it. It allows you to go uh, southern interior, northern region, and look at all the cams on one page. Uh, I use it quite a bit. I also use the map system where you can see the whole province at a time and just kind of zero into specific areas. I was looking for sunshine. Uh, one of our viewers, Ilona, was uh, talking about where maybe some good weather or sunshine might be. This is Burns Lake. Uh, looking west, it was one of the few places I could find with blue sky right now. But remember, those wind patterns are going to change, and uh, there are fires pretty much throughout the province. Though I did notice that Coffee Creek between Caslow and Nelson is looking quite reasonable. We can see a little bit of sunshine coming in from the east. But let's hop back to our neck of the woods. This is the Sheridan Cam on Highway 24, Drive BC, looking westwards towards 93 Mile House. There's some haze in the distance, uh, about a kilometer, two kilometers out. Uh, more visibility than uh, a lot of areas south. And of course, the density is going to be in the center of the province. That's the area of the Nacheco Plateau west of Prince George, which several complex fires are now burning. The smoke from these fires is traveling south, down through the center of the province, then it spins out the lower mainland and heads towards Vancouver Island. And air quality out there is being affected by fires way up in the center of the province. The island also has its own wildfires kind of coursing through the center at the north end of the island. These are infrared indications from the NRC on a 24-hour map. And they're displaying all the infrared hotspots visible up until 7.45 this morning. Now we're going to roll into a 12-hour map of the same region and we can see there's not a lot of difference. There's still a lot of volatility, a lot of these red spots that are being generated very recently. For comparison, let's jump back over to the area around the Sheridan Cam and uh, near Lone Butte, 93 Mile House. We're not seeing any infrared indications for the last 24 hour period. Now I've turned on the markers to show where fires are just north of Horse Lake. So just because we can't see infrared doesn't mean there isn't a fire there. Sometimes they're obscured by cloud, smoke, haze, fog. So one thing I've learned is pull in multiple sources of information. A good resource is the BC Wildfire Service map. We've zoomed into an area west of Prince George. This is kind of where the the Fraser Plateau and the Nechaco Plateau meet and they're around Fraser Lake, Francois Lake. There's been some serious fires, uh, complex fires. If we go to the infrared on the NRC now, we can see 
heat indications over the last 24 hour period and now we'll roll into the last 12 hours so the most recent and this may give us some idea of which way the fire is traveling check your area often uh, just in case something new has popped up you can see those individual red dots towards the center of the screen those are new fires that have just started i keep coming back to the bc wildfire uh, see what they've seen and then go and look on the infrared and see if I can get more detail on the position and the size of the fire and its behavior. We've zoomed into the Nadina Lake fire south of Houston and we're looking at the 24-hour map of all the infrared being displayed in the last 24 hours and we're going to roll into just the last 12 hours so we can see the most recent fire hotspots and this may give us an idea of which way the fire is moving. Here we can see a lot of activity on those southeastern uh, flanks and what looks to be some patterning. There may be some control strategy at work there to limit the spread. We're jumping back over to the Shovel Lake, Francois Lake fires. We're looking at the most recent 24-hour map up till 7.45 this morning. Now we'll roll into the most recent 12 hours of activity. There we can see movement to the eastwards, southeastwards. This can be following wind patterns. Uh, in the last video, I mistakenly identified one of the earlier fires as the Shovel Lake fire. It's an area where there's been multiple fires since June. The Shovel Lake fire, that started on July 27th, and the one to the south, the Francois Lake fire, started on August 1st, August 2nd, due to a lightning strike. So I'm going to play back the animation. Uh, this is starting July 27th. We'll see the Shovel Lake fire ignite. Then on August 2nd, we'll see just south the Island Lake fire uh, near Francois Lake. That starts, and then on August 7th, watch as wind comes through and dramatically increases the size just in a 24-hour period. Here we go. And now we're back looking at the situation that uh, was occurring yesterday where a lot of heat is being generated on the southeast eastern flanks along the northern flank but there's also pockets that are over on the western side. Winds are buffeting, winds are changing and here's that image from August 7th and looking at the scale that fire moved approximately 10 to 15 kilometers in a 24-hour period. That's why it's crucial that you know what your routes are going to be, what resources you're going to need well in advance. I'd like to take a look at another fire. This is just southwest of Quenelle, approximately 20-25 kilometers. And if you notice, a new fire has popped up within the evacuation alert zone of the first fire. This is caused by lightning. It's at Hawk Road and uh, the size is still indicated under a hectare. I don't have any confirmation on infrared whether there's been growth. We're looking at those two infrared patches in the lower right portion of your screen. This is southwest of Quenelle by approximately 20-25 kilometers. This is the older Narcosley Creek fire and if we roll into the most recent 12-hour maps seeing a lot fewer infrared it's a good sign that uh, the fire progress is slowing, that it's getting cooler. We're switching over to the Canadian Wildland Fire Information System and looking at most recent infrared over 24 hours, 
this uh, mapping system is really good if you like to analyze the terrain. You can also click on individual hotspots there and find out more data, what uh, their calculations are as far as how hot and uh, what the source material may be. This is the Geogratis surface overlay, and I'm looking at the terrain as it rolls down to the Fraser River on the lower right portion of your screen. Pulling back again, and I'm going to make a comparison with Windy. We're looking at movement from the south to the north. It's higher velocity on the hillsides and then a lower velocity in the center of your screen along the Fraser River. West of Highway 97, the wind is coming from the west, and east of Highway 97, the wind is coming from the east. It's meeting at the middle over the river and then flowing gently northwards. So this gives you more data to assess your situation and plot your course depending on where you are in the path of the fire or if you're on the outskirts of these wind channels. And from this perspective, overlooking the southern interior, it really does seem to follow the path of the highway, Highway 97, Highway 1, up into the Caribou. There appears to be a little bit more wind speed uh, on the Nechaco Plateau, west of Prince George. It, general flow appears to be moving from the west to the east. There's a lot of variation depending on the terrain and your position, whether you're in the valleys or along the ridge lines. Southwest coast, uh, lower mainland, a lot slower winds, more lazier action, uh, meandering, a lot of smoke and haze in the lower mainland right now. And uh, off the coast, some high velocities there heading from the north to the south. And I'd like to draw your attention to this uh, little anomaly of wind speed in central Washington between Wenatchee, Omak, and Spokane, almost a little Bermuda Triangle of wind velocity. And I'm using this as an example to say, explain that wind can also be very localized. Is there any moisture in the forecast? This is the next few days up to the 10-day model. And it does appear that there is some moisture rolling in. I think the north coast is going to get the best of it. The interior of the province seems to be remaining fairly dry. We'll zoom in and look at a few regions. Uh, this is the southern interior. And moisture seems to come as far as the Okanagan. Hopefully uh, you get a few drops out there. Again, this is a forecast for 10 days from now, so the accuracy is limited. Uh, further up north, uh, hopefully you get more rain up there if it's not being held back by those coastal mountains. Looking into the area around Prince George, the Nechaco Plateau, not a lot of moisture there. Towards Bella Coola might have some come in. And then zooming right into Gold Country, uh, rain may occur in Clinton, but not necessarily at 70 mile house so there seems to be a, a dividing line there so we'll look ahead in 10 days and see whether this was accurate uh, temperature looks like 11 degrees at the center of the universe and vedette uh, this shot i took early in the morning i wanted to get an overnight we seem to be having a cooler band come through british columbia right along the rockies and west of that uh, that's come down from Alaska. And I'm looking at the behavior of those ocean temperatures, and they kind of make a 45-degree angle from left to right, right towards the interior of BC. So I'd suggest that we are getting this influence off the Pacific. It's uh, probably seasonal, cyclical. There's uh, a lot of rhythms to the weather at work here. Movement is flowing from the west to the east, and as it gets towards the coast, it bends and turns and comes around and does a circle loop along Vancouver Island. It's almost like a, a suction action, pulling the smoke out and uh, sending us back more air, which then recirculates. Unfortunately, we're not getting any precipitation out of that right now. Looking at NASA's world view, we can see the movement of these air patterns towards the coast of British Columbia and then in the center a lot of dry air as smoke 
gets circulated down and then to the left of the screen and out to the coast. Uh, zooming in to the area around Kamloops, Savona, Cache Creek, there was a lot of fog and that's showing up almost like snow on the ground. A very interesting and unique uh, picture from NASA's world view. And I've zoomed into the area around Clinton. We can see it also looks like snowfall fell on Clinton, but that's fog. And further up north where we're having a lot of these circular patterns, it uh, looks like it's primarily flowing from west to east. But if we take a look on Windy, we can see that the motion is moving northwards from the coast and then kind of swirls over top of the province and then comes back down again under a lot of cover so it may be difficult to get infrared when clouds get that dense so far the data on the nrc has been really good it's been uh, fast responsive and easy to access so i've been relying on that a lot more than the google earth kml's Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I'll keep track of uh, the infrared, uh, looking for changes. and But do check with the official sites below for the latest updates on evacuation notices and alerts. Be safe, everyone, and keep your nose to the breeze.